Hi, I'm John Jordan from UC Santa Cruz and the Dickens Project, and I want to talk with you a little uh, about uh, two of the monthly numbers in David Copperfield that you have been reading, and those are monthly numbers 11 and 12. And each one of those monthly numbers has three chapters. And the important thing to know about this section of the novel is that monthly number 10, which immediately precedes these, this set of chapters, is exactly halfway through the, the novel. And halfway through the novel, monthly number 10, is always an important climax. And in monthly number 10, you remember that we've just learned that Emily and Steerforth have run away together and that the engagement between Emily and Ham has been broken. So in the first chapter in monthly number 11, we learn about the reactions that different people have. And so as you read this part of the, of the novel, think about the different ways that people react and think about how David reacts, think about how Mr. Peggotty reacts, think about how Ham reacts and what do they say. And then uh, Ham, David takes uh, uh, Mr. Peggotty to visit uh, Steerforth's mother and uh, Rosa Dartle. And there's a very interesting scene that takes place between Mr. Peggotty and Mrs. Steerforth. And Rosa Dartle sort of is a chorus talking in the background. So look closely at those, uh, those sections of, of, uh, of that um, chapter. That's chapter number 32 that's in, entitled The Beginning of a Long Journey. And so it's almost as if the novel begins again at, uh, with uh, monthly number 11 uh, uh, because Steerforth and Emily have gone away and David is now starting a new um, path on his, his journey through life. And so as this monthly number continues, there's some other new things that happen. The, the love story, the romance plot between um, David and Dora is developing. And so we have what's mostly in chapter number 33, it's, which is entitled Blissful, um, a comic chapter that's largely about David's courtship of, uh, of Dora. And it includes David's proposal. And one thing to look at carefully that's very funny in, in the novel is how Jip responds. And Jip is, you remember, is Dora's dog. And uh, what's the relationship between Jip and David like? Um, I was asking about what the reactions are of the characters in the previous chapter. What about Jip's reaction to uh, the proposal uh, to Dora? Um, and then chapter 34 is, is entitled, My Aunt Astonishes Me. And this is another important development in the plot because there's a big piece of news that we learn uh, that again causes David to change the direction of his, uh, of his life journey. Because it turns out that Aunt Betsy, who has been the principal uh, resource, financial resource and sort of um, uh, emotional support for David, has gone bankrupt. So what does this mean for David? He, he essentially has to start his life all over again without the financial support of Aunt Betsy. So we learned some information about how Aunt Betsy went bankrupt. And we also see a scene in which David goes to um, uh, find out from Mr. Spenlow uh, whether he can cancel his article. So think about what articles are. What does it mean to cancel your articles? And why does David want to cancel articles, his articles? Uh, what does it mean for him? So those are the three chapters in monthly number 11. And then when we go to monthly uh, number 12, there again are three chapters. First one is called Depression. The second one is called Enthusiasm. And the third one is called A Little Cold Water. So again, think of David as starting a new uh, path, starting on a new path in his uh, life journey. And in number 30, in chapter 35, the one called Depression, 
Uh, David is talking about his engagement to Dora, and he's talking to Aunt Betsy. And Aunt Betsy says, uh, blind, blind, blind. And that is something that gets repeated at the end of that chapter when David sees a blind beggar on the street. So think about blindness. In what ways is David blind? What does it mean to be blind? And why does Dickens have that sort of refrain that, that repeated uh, saying, blind, blind, blind. Um, there are a number of other things in that chapter that are, are interesting um, uh, as well. Um, there's, David has a dream, and I wanted to read the dream that David has because it's a, it's a very interesting dream. David has, has dreams at several points in the novel, and you, you should always pay attention to scenes where David has a dream. But this is the um, description. It's on page 510 in the Penguin edition. As to sleep, I had dreams of poverty in all sorts of shape, but I seemed to dream without the previous ceremony of going to sleep. Now I was ragged, wanting to sell Dora matches, six bundles for a halfpenny. Now I was at the office in a nightgown and boots, remonstrated with by Mr. Spinlow on appearing before the clients in that airy attire. Now I was hungrily picking up the crumbs that fell from old Tiffy's daily biscuit, regularly eaten when St. Paul struck one. Now I was hopelessly endeavoring to get a license to marry Dora, having nothing but one of Uriah Heap's gloves to offer in exchange, while the, which the whole commons rejected. And still more or less conscious of my own room, I was always tossing about like a distressed ship in a sea of bedclothes. It's a wonderful dream. There are a lot of details there that I think you should pay attention to and ask yourself about. What, is, what, is Dave, what do David's dreams tell us about his unconscious life? So the, um, the next chapter, which is called Enthusiasm, um, talks about, uh, again, David is starting a, a new, on a new career path. And the career path that he uh, decides for himself is to um, become a parliamentary reporter. So you should think about what a parliamentary reporter does and how David is going to make a living because he no longer has Aunt Betsy to support him and he no longer has his cushy job at Doctors Commons and so he's going to have to support himself on his own. He's going to have to go to work and Aunt Betsy gives him advice about how to, how to do this, but she also, remember, thinks that he's blind, blind, blind. So chapter 37, the last chapter in that monthly number, again, David is starting on a new, uh, a new career, and he has a serious talk with Dora, and the chapter is called A Little Cold Water. And so the little cold water that he uh, throws, that David throws, is cold water on the idea of his marriage to um, Dora, because he tells her that they're now going to have to be very serious about how they um, keep to a budget, and they're going to have to take care of themselves financially. And so David is the one who's throwing cold water. So how does Dora react? Uh, to this news, this sort of change in the direction of their relationship. So I hope you'll enjoy uh, these chapters of the, the novel. Uh, it's uh, Both of these uh, monthly numbers are numbers where the novel is taking a new start, heading in a new direction, and David is going to make a new life for himself. So thanks very much. <laughs>